I just spent five days exploring the Victorian high country with three other riders on what would have to be my most challenging adventure yet. This adventure had it all, from tough tracks, crashes and broken down bikes, as well as spectacular views, some unreal camping and plenty of good times. So strap yourselves in for this series, it's going to be epic. G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel and as always I hope you're doing well. Now for this adventure guys I was catching up with a good mate of mine who a lot of you will already know and that of course is none other than Lance the Apprentice Adventurer. Now if you're new to the channel Lance and I met up and tackled a big adventure last year all the way to Cape York and that trip was absolutely amazing so I knew that we were in for some fun this time around. But it wasn't just Lance and myself for this adventure we also had two other guys lined up to join us on the trip. We had another adventure motorcycle YouTuber, Josh from Osmoto, on his WR250, and he was also bringing along his mate Harrison with his fancy looking KTM 690. The plan for the trip was a five day adventure loop around the Victorian high country, starting and finishing in Jindabyne for myself and Lance, while the other boys would drop off a day earlier to head back home to Melbourne. We planned out the route for the five days with some of the toughest tracks in the high country thrown into the mix including tracks like Billy Goat Bluff, the Dedic Trail and Mount Gibbo Track, just to name a few. It would be around 1500 kilometres of tough adventure. Now the adventure started a few days earlier for me. I drove from my home on the Gold Coast all the way to Jindabyne with the DRZ in tow. But I also picked up a hitchhiker of sorts along the way, giving Lance and Sally a lift as well. We made it to Jindabyne in the afternoon and waited for Josh and Harrison to arrive from Melbourne before venturing off on our journey the following morning. Now unfortunately I have no usable audio from my helmet mic from the first two days of the trip due to some technical difficulties. Shout out to GoPros. But rather than waste all this footage, I figured I would do this first episode in a slightly different format, so I hope you all enjoy. To start the trip off, the snowy region did what it does best and delivered us a wet, cold, foggy morning. It didn't take too long before we popped out of the fog and had nothing but blue skies. We really were spoilt for good weather on this trip. We set off south out of Jindabyne, along the Barry Way. Barry Way is a great adventure trail, really, really easy, but it's an awesome way to start your adventure out of Jindabyne, enjoying the sights. But we were here for some more challenging tracks, so it didn't take very long before we turned off Barry Way into some harder stuff. Or? No, my GoPro went flat as soon as he's all left. Oh, yeah. of course. Uh. <laughs> Down we go, boys. Give it a sec. That way I don't have to uh, get on the brakes too much. And I don't want to hit anyone if they come off. As every YouTuber says, this camera will not do this justice, and this definitely won't. But just believe me, it's pretty steep. <laughs> didn't have these little uh, erosion mounds built into it. Wind down there pretty quick and brake locked up the whole area. Hang on to it Harrison. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh damn. Yeah, okay? All good? Yeah, I'm all good. <laughs> well, I can't even walk down here, I'm falling over. <laughs> is it in gear? Ah, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> it should be. Good. Ready, one, two, three. <laughs> I got the balance of it. If, as long as it doesn't roll forward, I got the balance. Oh, there it is, you. Yeah, I'll just roll. All good? Yeah. Thank you. You're right. <laughs> He's good. Now we all knew going into this that the high country would be riddled with steep sections of track, both up and down. 
but we all had a few moments along this track as we warmed into the adventure. It definitely took me a little while to feel somewhat comfortable on the steeper stuff. Oh, that's why the back is going everywhere. Quite locked up. Oh. <laughs> oh, this one's bad. I didn't have my camera on. I just held onto it here on the side. I nearly ended up down there. You all good? Lance just dropped it there. I might just move. Because they have the same issue I did. It might end up hitting me. Probably should have changed the gearing on this thing. I just Right, this is a good place to stop. Whew, beautiful. Nice bro. Yeah. There's probably, I think, two more or three more and you'll be at the river. Uh, I'll keep going down. Yeah, just so he doesn't get to you. It's a battle to even walk you in. <laughs> the track began to flatten out just a little bit and we all blasted along making some good time. But one of us decided it was getting a bit warm and now would be a great time to take a little dip. I'll let you figure out who it was. Through the creek. Oh. But then this bit over here, it's still deep too. Yeah, I don't know if I got water or not. Well, you got it up pretty quickly. Your course was on this side, so that wasn't under. <laughs> One second. <laughs> Hang on, let me get the guard down. Damn. Thanks, brother. Yeah, I will just say if your air filter's not wet, yeah. happy days, because this was not under. It's not even wet. Let's see what happens here. I've just checked the air filter and um, it doesn't seem to be any water that's gone in there. I did pick it up pretty quickly. Um, turned it off too, so I hey. think we should be good. I'm just talking to the audience, mate. Oh. You ready? Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Like a new one. Oh. Now feeling refreshed after my quick dip in the creek, we pushed on. But as it is in the high country, the next challenge is never far away. That was a pretty steep climb. Just heading down now. Lance and I here. Wait for the other boys to catch up. I want to watch a bike come up it because it felt pretty steep. <laughs> go, go, go. He's done it. That's one. 
Harrison had a drop at the base of the hill, which caused him to have a stuck throttle. Not an ideal thing to have ever really, but especially when trying to climb a steep track. We got it sorted, and after a few attempts, we were all at the top. What? What? A pile of oh. <laughs> oh, can someone hit my Garmin inreach button? Lance has got some bindies. <laughs> oh, yummy. I thought maybe oh, that was wow. a or something, but no. I can handle crashing, but not bindies, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we eventually popped back out onto some easier going tracks and roads, where we decided to make a beeline towards a major tourist attraction in the Snowy Mountains region. Phillips Bridge was constructed between 1931 and 1936 in two stages. The bridge was due to open in 1934, but record floods washed the bridge away just prior to it being opened. The bridge was then reconstructed slightly higher to prevent this happening again. The deck of the bridge is 255 metres long, and at its time of construction it was considered to be an extraordinary engineering feat. The roads to access the bridge are easily accessible, so definitely stop in and check out this cool crossing of the Snowy River. Upon all of us leaving McKillop's Bridge, the group would be split in half. Harrison and Josh decided to give our next section of riding a miss, while Lance and I would continue along the Dedic Trail to make camp. The plan was to meet back up in the town of Buchan the next morning. Now with all the excitement of the first day of the trip, I made some mistakes throughout the day. I didn't eat enough, and I didn't drink enough either. Unknown to myself at this time, but all these mistakes were going to catch up with me very shortly. I began to make stupid errors, and I felt like I wasn't putting the bike where I wanted to out on the tracks. I had one stupid crash, but luckily enough, I bounced back up okay. I've had a look at the tank. Oh, sorry, not the tank, the seat, where the seat mounts to the tank there. It sort of just clips itself in, it just sits there, but it's actually broke the piece that sits over uh, the metal bit on the tank. It's got a crack in it, so not much point trying to fix it up. I'm just going to leave it. The tank bag on there kind of holds the uh, seat in place with all its straps so I'm just going to have to run with that till we get to camp and then take a better look but I better get going otherwise Lance will be turning around. And but a little further down the track I began to experience cramping. First in my forearm and then in my leg. Definitely not ideal when you're about to tackle a really steep section on the Dedic Trail, known as the Mount Jones Staircase. I did my best, but it definitely wasn't easy. I ended up getting stuck on one section that ended up beating me. I had zero energy and I couldn't get the bike free. I really didn't want to, but I ended up giving in and I let Lance ride my bike around 100 metres up the hill, where the track began to flatten out. So thanks Lance, you're an absolute legend mate. The next obstacle was track closures. We couldn't continue on our planned route, so we ended up pushing on a bit longer into the afternoon than we wanted to, but eventually we were treated with an unexpected campsite, which actually turned out to be really, really good. Hopefully you can hear me pretty well. This camera's dead and I can't be bothered changing it right now, but uh, we're here. This is Waratah Flat Campground. We're not gonna make the campground by the river we wanted to. I'm absolutely spent and we're running out of daylight, to be honest, and we're not exactly sure how far it is to that other campground. So the safest bet is to just go here in this campground. There's wood, there's a toilet. It's actually pretty nice, but we're gonna just quickly zip back to a little creek, fill up with some water. We'll come back, set up. Be good to go, but man, massive day. But I'll talk to you guys when we get back to camp. This is where we're getting our water from. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> There's mine, can you reach? Oh, got him. So I think I said it before, but we didn't make our intended campground of, um, what was the campground we were gonna to get to? Jackson Creek's Crossing. Jackson Creek's Crossing, didn't make it. It's probably a bit too much further. Uh, would have been getting close to dark. So this is uh, Waratah Flat Campground. It's actually pretty good. 
Got a whole bunch of firewood here already cut up from someone else, which is awesome. Uh, we're all set up, tents everywhere. Uh, there's a portaloo over the back, which is be ready for the morning. But yeah, great little spot. So we'll make the most of it after a uh, pretty rough day from myself. Had a few dramas, but Lance helped me out and we're here in the end. So get some food into us, chill out, talk about the day and then um, be plenty more fun tomorrow. After a mammoth first day, we both got some much needed food into us before sitting around the bush TV and talking about the following day's plans. It became a common theme on this trip, but we were already well behind of where we wanted to be at the end of day one. Good morning everybody, day two of the trip. I slept like an absolute baby last night. I was so wrecked and tired from yesterday's mission. Lance was up early this morning, he said he could hear wild dogs or something and some horses getting around the campsite, but I didn't hear a thing, I was out like a light. But I've checked over the bike from yesterday, this strap on my tank bag broke, so I've put a little grunt strap on there to hold that down, that's going to have to get me by. Checked over everything else, yesterday when I came off, my seat mount onto the tank uh, popped out, so I've fixed that up as well. And then I checked my chain, the chain was loose, so I went to tighten it, and this side here, didn't match the other side so it had rattled loose yesterday at some point so my tire was pointing probably to the left it wasn't pointing straight so that definitely wouldn't have helped me out on the tracks other than that everything's fixed up ready to go uh, I just got to pack my tent up and chuck some things in the bags Lance is pretty much packed up you ready mate hey, these dehydrated meals are not like me. <laughs> with some changes to our route for the morning we tried to pick the quickest way possible to Jackson's Crossing to get things back on track Josh and Harrison spent the night just outside of Buchan and we wanted to meet back up with them around 10am. I was happy with the easy start to the morning, but it was definitely short lived because before I knew it we were arriving at Jackson's Crossing and man it looked daunting. The crossing is split into two sections, with a sandy rocky island in the middle. The base of the crossing is anything but flat, large slimy rocks everywhere and a depth which sat just below our airbox height. River levels were low, so I expect that this crossing would be impossible for motorcycles after some decent rain. I knew this one would be a challenge, but I was ready to give it a go. Longest legs first is a saying I like to run with on these sorts of crossings. So Lance, being more brave than me, he went in first. He got hung up on a few spots on the first section of the crossing, but overall, he made it look pretty easy. A bit of a confidence boost for me. So then it was my turn. This first 30 metres of the crossing was the deepest, so I was extra cautious. I ended up getting hung up on one section and began to fatigue a bit, so rather than risk dropping the bike, I decided to play it safe and take a quick break. In hindsight, this was the wrong option. While I stayed stationary for just a minute, something happened to the bike and it wouldn't fire back up. As you sit down, the bike sinks that extra couple so let's not muck around this little section. Uh oh. I didn't realize I was yeah, sudden. Grab it, grab it. Go. Oh no. Oh no. Have you taken on water? You shouldn't be. Unfortunately, we had to push the bike out to the island. It would have been close to 100 meters, I think. If I was on my own here, I'd probably still be pushing the bike out of this river. Once we got to the island, we began to check the bike out. Lance was convinced that I'd taken on water through the airbox, but I wasn't so sure. We tipped the bike up and no water came out of the exhaust, and after checking the air filter, it was bone dry. It appeared that no water had got through. The bike still wouldn't fire back up after sitting for a few minutes, so my next thought was that it had to be a fuel issue. I drained the fuel out of the carby, and wouldn't you know it, water everywhere. Once this was drained, the bike fired back up with no issues, and I was back in the game. A waste of around 20 minutes or so for the day, but a simple fix, which was lucky. But the crossing wasn't over for us just yet. We still had the second section to come. It was a much shorter crossing when it comes to distance, but the rocks on the base of this section were larger and slipperier. Once again, Lance went first.
He got the job done with minimal help and then it was up to me. I took my time, but this section wasn't quite as deep, so I felt reasonably comfortable, but I just couldn't get the grip that I needed in some spots. But with a bit of teamwork, we were both able to get across Jackson's Crossing. I'm gutted I don't have the audio I should from this part of the adventure, but hopefully you can all still get a feel of the difficulty of this crossing. If I was riding solo, I don't think I would have even attempted this one to be honest. After my little incident in the crossing, we were again behind on time. We messaged the other boys to say we most likely wouldn't make Buchan by 10am, and if they wanted to head off on the planned route, we would try and catch up later in the day. A short while later, we arrived in the little town of Buchan. We refueled our bikes, refueled ourselves, and continued on the planned route. We estimated that the other boys would be somewhere between one or two hours ahead of us. From Buchan, it was all to the west. Our route took us through Mount Elizabeth Nature Reserve, and some of the tracks through here were in great condition, so we thought we could possibly gain some time on the other boys by picking up the pace. We also saved some more time with a message from Josh and Harrison, alerting us to a massive down tree on McLean's track that was impassable. They had to backtrack a short ways to find an alternate route, but luckily enough, we were able to avoid the backtracking. Most of this journey was fast flowing and easy going trails, until we came across the fainting range track. Now Lance had mentioned this track to me earlier on in the day, and the information that he got from his source was to be careful. It is a pretty steep track. And they weren't kidding. It certainly was the steepest downhill section that we had done so far for the trip. My brakes copped an absolute flogging on the way down, but eventually we wound our way to a beautiful little river crossing. Now while all the tracks throughout the day were great, the one that I was looking forward to the most was the Haunted Stream track. Now I'm assuming it's a lesser known track in the Victorian high country because I had never heard of it myself, but the word was that it had around 50 creek crossings along it. Sounds like the perfect adventure trail to me. Water levels along all crossings were at perfect levels for us, so Lance and I had an absolute blast smashing along this trail. As we made it to the end of the amazing haunted stream track, the day was getting on. It was around 4pm and Lance and I thought we might have caught up to Josh and Harrison by now, but we hadn't come across them in any of the campsites we had passed by. We were still behind on our planned distance for the day by a lot, so in hopes that the boys may have pushed on to somewhere like Dargo for the night, I punched in directions to Dargo via my GPS and set off to make up some more distance to help us out the following day but also hoping for the easiest and most direct route possible to finish off the day. Now the GPS did its best and got us to a few easy maintained tracks, but it wasn't all easy going. We still came across a few steep climbs and descents, unavoidable in the high country really, 
but we still had a heck of a lot of fun. Now with Dargo finally in striking distance and looking like we would get there just before dinner time, the day had one final trick up its sleeve to really test me out. We hadn't seen anyone on the track since we left Bucken earlier that day and I obviously got a little complacent. I was a bit too far to the right while going around a blind corner and as luck may have it, there was a four wheel drive coming the opposite direction. I made a split second decision of turning left and locking the rear brake. I just missed the bull bar on the front right corner of the vehicle and ended up riding the bike into a culvert on the side of the track. I scraped my bars along the cliff face before coming off the bike and to a stop. Miraculously, I got up uninjured. I thought for sure I would have had some damage, but I was completely fine. Overall, the bike was fine too. A few scratches to the front end and a broken tie down point for my Fender toolkit, but other than that, she was good to go. Lance pulled up a short time later, but missed the whole thing and he couldn't understand what I was doing on the side of the road. The driver of the vehicle didn't stop either. I was a little annoyed at the time, but what can you do? I was just happy that I was unhurt and that I could continue on. It was a massive wake up call, that is for sure. But after all of that, it was a slow ride down to Dargo. We had received a message from the boys that they did in fact make it to Dargo and they had a cabin at the Dargo River Inn where Lance and I could stay as well if we could make it. With the thought of a decent meal and a few drinks, I had to make it there. We finally caught up with Josh and Harrison and shared plenty of stories from the day's adventures. We settled in for the night and we were all keen to get the following day underway with all four riders back on board once again. So that brings us to the end of day two of this high country trip. As I said earlier, I'm gutted I don't have the audio I wanted from these two days because it was some of the best and toughest riding that I've done to date. But I really hope you all still enjoyed this first episode and it's slightly different format. Let me know down below in the comments what you think. And lastly, for those of you that have stuck around, if you are interested in the GPX files from this adventure, I'll be posting the files on my Buy Me A Coffee page to purchase for a couple of dollars. The money goes towards any of my future adventures, so it's a great way to support the channel and a way that you can have your own adventure without the hassle of all the route planning. The link will be in the description of this video down below. But before you all go, you aren't going to want to miss the next installment of this adventure as we point our noses towards the infamous Billy Goats Bluff track and head further west into the beautiful high country. So be sure to subscribe before you go. But that's all from me guys. Thanks again for watching. Ride safe and I'll see you all in the next one.